When it comes to the greatest red wine grape varieties of Italy, most people think of Sangiovese, Nebbiolo, to a small extent Alianico, but this grape has gained a lot of steam. That of course is Narello Mascalese from Sicily. It's one of the main components in Etna Rosso. It grows on Mount Etna. Etna is the tallest active volcano in all of Europe. It towers over the whole island. It's well above 10,000 feet. Etna is a really magical place when you go there, a lot of the terraces, a lot of vineyards are all black volcanic rock, even the villages are made out of it. And it's something weird to be tasting wine and looking up at a smoking volcano. A lot of the vineyards are also vertically pruned. In essence, it kind of looks like the Northern Rhone. It's a grape that produces perfumed wines. In fact, Mount Etna has been dubbed the Burgundy of the Mediterranean, but the grape still has some tannins. I actually did a face-off video a few months ago. Is this grape really the Burgundy of the Mediterranean? Where I pitted Etna Etna Rosso versus a high-end Burgundy. Now I think we're gonna do something that's a little bit more even. A few years ago at the Tormina Gourmet Festival, I did a blind tasting masterclass of Brunello de Montalcino versus Etna Rosso versus Barolo. I thought it was really interesting, but for some reason I can't find my tasting notes. So let's just do it in video form here. Do you have to know, in order to be Etna Rosso's, producers are able to blend up to 10% of Norella Cappuccio in with the Norella Mascalesi. That's mainly because they're co-planted varieties. Norella Mascalesi is often considered to be the higher quality grape variety while Norella Cappuccio adds a little bit of structure and a little bit of color. I have two Etna Rosso's here. One that's more of an entry level wine while another one's a Contrada, it's a single vineyard higher level wine. And I think it's gonna fit right in because I have a mid price Nebbiolo and also a really high quality Nebbiolo. If you watch the channel, you know what the grape Nebbiolo is. If you don't know what the grape is, it's behind two of Italy's greatest wines, Barolo Barbaresco, but it also produces beautiful wines in Lombardy, namely the Appalachian Valtellina. Also the north part of Piedmont above Barolo Barbaresco, that's called Alto Piemonte. The most famous Appalachian there is probably Gattinara, but there are Appalachians like Gemma, Boca, and a couple others. These are really mountain Nebbiolos because they're right at the foothills of the Alps. I mean, you can see the mountain. I've also tasted some beautiful ones in Val d'Aosta, which borders Piemonte. Okay, enough of me blabbing. Let's taste some wines. You ready? Big perfume wine. So we're gonna taste out of big bowl glasses. I have my Rovsia wine glasses. These are the best and expensive wine glasses I've ever used. They're burgundy shaped glasses, but they just work well with a variety of different wines. I have a link in the description box. If you wanna check them out, it helps the channel if you purchase with that link. So thank you. I carve in these wines, I had somebody mix them up. Let's get ready to rock and roll. I really like doing these blind tasting videos. You like them too. With these smaller blind tastings, I like them. Maybe I can spend a little more time with the wines. I do like the bigger blind tastings as well because it, it mixes me up. It's, it's a little bit more challenging, but I don't know. You tell me, do you like the videos with smaller amounts of wines in the blind tasting or bigger amounts? One of these bottles was a little bit taller than the other three, so I had to put a replacement bottle in. I put a white wine in there, so once I pull it out and reveal, I'll know what wine that was. Okay, these wines are a little bit lighter in color. Nebbiolo, Norello, Mascalese have a lighter color to them. Number one is beautiful. <laughs> I think I like Norello Mascalese so much because it's also sour cherry. Nebbiolo has sour cranberry, sour cherry type flavors. I guess that's why I like Sangiovese as well. This does have a little bit of smokiness too. Bright cherry flowers. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful wine. This has cranberry. I think this, I'm leaning more towards this one being Nebbiolo. One's beautiful. I, I almost compare that almost to like a Barbaresco light type of wine. I thought it was really outstanding. That's a great start. Let's move on here to number two. <laughs> number two. I wonder if this is all, though I do have one from Alto Piemonte in here and that's what it rem reminds me of. It has a little bit more rustic type of wine making uh, and not in a bad way. It's a wine with a lot of character. Oh, it's beautiful. Tons of perfume, a little bit of volatile acidity, sour cherry notes, cranberry. This is more perfumed while number one has a little bit more floral attributes. Hmm, some chewy tannin, jeez. Uh, Maybe these first two are Nebbiolo, and that'd be funny if so, whoever mixed them up, these two are Narello Muscalese. I think for sure that this is gonna be a Nebbiolo. I, that's what I think. Uh, number one, I'm kind of confused on. I like the nose on this. Uh, a little bit more than this. However, I think this is a better wine because I like the fruit and the and the finish on the back end of this wine a little bit more. Two, I think it's Nebbiolo. One, I don't know. It could be Etna. We'll see here. Wines three and four. 
These two have a little bit more color uh, than the first two. So more bright cherry, not sour cherry, just pure cherry, not black cherry. A little bit of, er a lot of earth type flavors, not perfume, not rose petal, not tar. Although it's still pretty grippy, I must say. It's really, really smoky. It's super smoky. Why number four here? <laughs> this is hard, man. Wine four, I get this subtle sweet mahogany sensation along with the cherry. These are more like bright cherry flavors, while these two are more sour cherry, even cranberry-like. So I'm thinking these two are more Nebbiolo-esque. Let's see here. Sweet, that's like just a touch of sweet mahogany. I think it reminds me of, I, I used to play guitar for eight, 10 years. I gave up because well, I could cover everything. I'm not a musical person, but towards the end of my guitar playing career, I bought a Martin D15. It's a brown guitar. It's the, it's it's made out of all mahogany. I just used to love smelling the sound hole out of that. That's what this reminds me of. A little bit of ch candied cherry. This wine's got a little bit more fruit. It's got some tannin as well. Mm. Let's see here. This is hard. <laughs> One I was the most confused on. I think it could go either way, but let's see, you know, I'm not double blind tasting here. Wine tasting is deductive. You're breaking things down. I know I have two Nebbiolos. I know I have two Norello Mascaleses. Uh, I think just get my tannic structure, I'm gonna go with number two and number four as Nebbiolo. I don't know, we'll see. Some really nice wines here. All of them above 90 points. These are tastings I really like because I like this flavor profile. Let's go with wine number three. Wine number three, Cherry, earth, smoky. It was a little bit grippy, but it was the smokiest out of the bunch. I think that this was the Narello Mascalesi. I thought this was the Etna. I gave it 91 points. I think it's a very good wine. Since flavors were so similar, I had to determine this on tannic structure. Let's take a look. This is... <laughs> Already messing up. This is the Cantina Garone. This is the Prunet Diacibrente 2019 from Valley Osalane Nebbiolo Superiore. This is made from 100 year old vines, only 2,600 bottles made, 40 bucks. Valley Osalane, if maybe I'm not pronouncing that right, if you've never heard of that, it is right at the northernmost point of Piemonte, right close to the border of Switzerland. Beautiful, beautiful scenery. That part of Italy, I've driven through it, is amazing. I haven't stopped to do any tastings, but I've driven through it. You see the high mountains. All the Appalachian is pretty high. Those of you that have never tasted wines from Alto Piemonte, I think that it's worth checking out, especially as Barolo Barbaresco prices are starting to rise. The tannins tend to be a little softer. The fruit tends to be a little darker for me. That's just my general impressions, but the tannic structure is a little bit lighter, and that's why I might've got confused. Okay, 40 bucks. I thought it was Etna Rosso because it was really smoky, 91 points. I really liked it. Still a good wine. Moving on to number two. I thought it was Nebbiolo because of the structure. I thought it had the biting tannins, but of course you see I'm starting to get all of these wrong. <laughs> I've got these wrong here. It's okay. I don't mind being wrong in blind tastings because blind tasting is tough. It is tough. 91 plus points. Let's take a look here. I thought it was Nebbiolo. <laughs> okay, I've got everything wrong. This is the Etna Rosso. This is the Terra Constantino. The Etna, Etna Rosso 2020. 35 bucks. Narella Mascalesi, 90%. Narella Capuccio, 10%. It says the vineyard's 42 years old. Uh, 35 bucks. Never tasted this producer before. I actually have a vlog coming up on Etna where I visited a ton of producers. It's just taking me a long time to get on it, so <laughs> just uh, be patient with me. It is a dynamic region in general. You're not gonna find an Etna Rosso in the US on the shelf less than 25 bucks. The Etnas tend to be pretty expensive, especially if you start to go into the single vineyards, which we have a single vineyard wine here. I mean, 35 bucks, this is the you know entry level wine. Really nice wine, thought it was Nebbiolo because it was pretty grippy, 91 plus points. So I messed up uh, these first two in identifying the grapes. Let's see if I can get these, these last two figured out. These were extremely close. Number one, I thought this was Barbaresco light. It really, to me, reminded me of Barbaresco. Uh, Tannins weren't super grippy, but they were tugging. It was smoky, but it had all the sour cherry, the cranberry. Just remember this one I said was a little bit more floral. Even though it was Barbaresco light, just on structure, I thought that this was the Norello Mascalesi, just simply on structure. However, it really acted like a Nebbiolo. Let's see if I got this right, uh, 92 plus points. This was very good wine. I really enjoyed drinking this. 
I got it one right. This is the this is the Anima Dente. This is the Etna Rosos the Contrada Santo Spirito 2019 40 bucks. I think this is a gorgeous wine. I've tasted this wine only aged before. I've never tasted a current release. I think it's excellent. Contradas are basically single vineyards there on Etna. My hot take with Etna, I don't think always the Contrada wines are a step up from the entry level or standard Etna Rosos. I know there are exceptions. That's just my hot take because these are delicate wines and who knows, maybe with time, maybe they're gonna age longer. But then again, Etna is, even though it's an older region, has been producing wine for a long time in terms of fine wine. It's a fairly young region in Italy so I guess time will tell with that. Uh, Santa Spirito is a pretty famous vineyard. It's in the village of Paso Pichardo. I was actually just at this vineyard. One of the most famous wineries, Vina Franchetti is there. Lovely wine, really good. 40, 40 bucks. Okay, I did get this one right. Remember I said the sweet mahogany, the candy cherry flavors. I thought the structure on this was really good. I did think it was Nebbiolo and it looks like I got it right. I gave it 93 points and that's that's a big time score. It's the white wine. So uh, what I replaced this wine with, this is the Moro Sebaste Parigi Nebbiola de Alba 2021, 28 bucks. So the cheapest wine in the bunch ended up winning. Nebbiola de Alba is an appellation I really like. You just don't see a lot of them. They're kind of basically like declassified Barolos. In the regions of Barolo Barbaresco, you're gonna see obviously those two wines. Then you're also gonna see Lange Nebbiolo and then Nebbiola de Alba. Lange Nebbiolo has looser restrictions. Nebbiola de Alba has tighter restrictions. It's supposed to be a better wine. I noticed the difference. I think those wines tend to be more structured and at 28 bucks, I think that's a heck of a bargain. So I did get these two mixed up, but tell me, do you like Nerello Mascalese? Do you like Nebbiolo? Do you have any favorite producers, favorite styles? Drop it in the comments below. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon.